All right, welcome to episode six of Gokshin Unfiltered. I'm here with JF, founder of NFT, at NFT. Yes, sir. JF, what's going yes. on? What's good? <laughs> Man, uh, it's good to talk to you. Uh, and like, I know everybody says that shit when they bring on a guest. It's good to talk to you, but no, this is seriously, it's good to go ahead and finally uh, link up with you, man. You know, one of the few people I like in Web3, so it's perfect. And it's crazy because there's only a few people that like me. So, like, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're like my best Twitter friend. <laughs> I don't know you in real life, but we're best Twitter friends. <laughs> well, you know, as soon as Canada opens up, uh, as soon as they open up their borders for U.S. citizens that uh, uh, haven't took their uh, little uh, shot there, maybe uh, we can go ahead and link up. Or if you come down to the good old USA. Uh, yeah, hey, bro, when, when the weather's hot, I'm in Miami. All right. not, or, or the summertime of New York's not a bad place to be. I'll be there, but I think I was telling you, you can just drive over the border through Buffalo and your money. The yeah, security is very light. Uh, and there's a topic that we should touch about is, uh, you know, why did the United States get the wrong side of Niagara? But uh, <laughs> we'll leave that for another day. We have like nothing. Like we got Drake, fucking Justin Bieber, like, what do we have? Well, you oh, can have oh, Justin Bieber back. Like, Drake? All right. <laughs> like, I get it. We can probably make a trade for that. We got uh, Celine Dion. Celine Dion is legit. Yeah, she is legit. She's Actually, I, I did shed a tear. I did <laughs> shed a tear. I'm not going to front. <laughs> Yo, JF, man. Like, you're... Hey. Honestly, I got to say that, like, you... um, Watching from afar... Like, I've been in the NFT space... Or I should say when NFTs were, um, when people approached me about NFTs, like the Vesas, uh, the Ken Bozaks, it was about 2017. I, I pushed it away as like, whatever, bro. Like I, I can't get into this. But then I looked into it and I was like, okay, the tech is there. I like where this is going. It could be a hit. Then, you know, it hits off in, I would say 2020-ish. And I see you out there. Like I, I see that account and I see you out there. Uh, how the fuck did you get into NFTs, man? Bro, oh, it's a, it's a wild ride. It's a wild fucking ride, but I'll give you the quick elevator pitch. So I had sold one of my companies, a social media company to Mark Cuban about three years ago, two and a half, three years ago. And together we were buying companies with large social following in more in like the NBA sphere, more on, on Instagram and such. I mean, we, you know, Mark loves sports, loves social, I love sports, loves social. So we just kind of became buddies. And one day he sent me an email. It was January of 2021. He sent me an email and he said, we're going all in on NFTs. And my initial reaction was like, what the fuck's an NFT? <laughs> I was barely in crypto. I had Bitcoin. Like, yeah. barely, like I wasn't in the space at all. And, but the last time Mark said he was going in, in all, sorry, all in on something, he put a billion dollars into Amazon. So I'm like, this guy's the God, you know, he's Mark Cuban. He's got that vision. I'm going to not take it with a grain of salt and do it and figure it yeah. out. Exactly. And my first initial reaction was, if this is going to be as big as Mark says it is, we got to own that social space of it. And I always wanted to create a brand where, you know, kind of like how Kleenex is to tissue. Okay. When they associate that item, it's with that brand regardless, right? So initially it was, let's get at NFT on Instagram. That was our first go. And Mark's like, great fucking idea, you know? <laughs> and man, we kind of just blew up. Everyone started talking about it. Most people thought we actually created the technology because yeah. there was so much hype around it. And, you know, if you're trying to figure out what NFTs are, your initial reaction is like, let me go to social. Yeah. Let me, and typically at the beginning it was Instagram. They type in NFT, it would go to my page, it would have a blue check mark, and it would have Mark Cuban's name on it, right? So <laughs> probably my best branding ever. <laughs> I mean, not not uh not bad to have uh, bad. Cuban back you. Dude, it was it got to a point where you know we were growing like with 
some days 50,000 followers a day on that account. That's crazy. Was, the average was about 20, 25,000 followers a day. And it, it was like, if you did, if you were not at an it didn't happen. You know, that's how much control this, this, this page had. And you know, ultimately we ended up getting it on Twitter and TikTok, And, you know, we formed a partnership with Snapchat, you know, that's the official NFT page on the discovery page, which has 360 million viewers yeah. uh, and YouTube, et cetera. And, you know, we, we were in a good position. We really had a lot of power, but we were also learning as, as we went, it was a, a lot of responsibility to take on that many, you know, to, to kind of evolve a new, almost like a, a cultural revolution. It was yeah. almost like, I tell people, it's like we owned the dot com, the word dot com and the dot com boot, you know, it's just, yeah. we could control what was happening. We were able to move, you know, if we, if we spoke about board of yacht clubs early on, it, it would, you know, affect the floor. So yeah. we're always trying to be very careful to give the best news out there, given that we were almost like the billboard for the industry. So it was, it was a beautiful thing. It certainly changed my life yeah. dramatically. Um, and, you know, all good things come to an end. I think our biggest downfall was being too successful. You know, when that's what I, I wanted to touch on that. Like, so like what happened? Like you have this tremendous resource, you know, tremendous community. You have, I mean, that, that was a large account. Like that is one of the largest accounts that I've ever seen that like, continue to like grow and grow and like when you said you had clout to go ahead and move things in into directions i mean we met or i would say yeah we met in a chat when you came into it because i actually we started off on like i was like yo it was something about (laughs) some i forgot what project it was i was like yo if you have so much power man if you have this type of clout I think we need to do it differently and you know how i am with my approach like i think we just need to do it differently for the community yeah. And you had the balls, like others were run, but you had the balls. You came in, you were like, yo, look, I'm learning mm-hmm. and I, I want to do a better job. I want to help the community. And from then on in, I was like, yo, this dude's not, you know, uh, he didn't run. Like to me, yeah. it was like most of these dudes that not that when you call them out, cause I, I don't, I don't like to use that word call out, but like when you say something, they run or they have somebody come in for them and they start troll, whatever it is, you came in there like a real dude, like, yo, all right, I'm going to make this better. I'm going to do things better. And I, I was like, yo, I can appreciate this guy and stand by him. So, yeah, uh, man, I appreciate but that, that, but that leads to this question. Like, okay, so now you're running shit and it's true. You are running shit. I see it from the sidelines. You are running shit. What happens now? Everything goes down. It had nothing to do with people are like, oh, you weren't using hashtag ad. It had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Twitter was da- just shut us down and we didn't even do ads on there. Uh, it was just poof, gone. And then a couple weeks later on Instagram, Facebook, gone, gone, gone. Yeah. Not many explanations. And, and you know, I had to hire the number one law firm in America. You know, I, I, I hired a crisis firm and I said, give me the give me the number one lawyer in America. Cause you know, if I'm going to fight this battle, I need to be taken seriously. So I got Elon Musk's lawyer, um, you know, Tom Brady's lawyer, Donald Trump's lawyer even. And yeah. I defended my right. Like I, you know, I, I built something pretty cool and I, I, yeah. I like to think that I changed the world a bit and brought NFTs into the mainstream and commercialized them and, and, and helped. I onboarded millions of people into the space. Right, that, that's for sure. That's 100%. So you and, hired all these people to just to get your name, like, yo, you're not going to shit on my name. Yeah. I have, listen, my name. Yeah, I, I get it. Right. I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm, you know me, like, I don't fuck around. Like, I'm just chill. Like, I don't, I didn't ask for, for all this and, and it just got carried away. You have to understand, we were getting between one to 5,000 DMs a day yeah. on Apple And it That's was crazy. the biggest celebrities in the world. And anyone and everyone like it just everybody wanted to get in and there was just it was like a bottleneck you yeah. had to come through us so it was just like we have like social media kids running here and this kid and like we had like a hundred employees like overnight and it yeah. was fucking chaos it was fucking chaos and before we knew it it was just gone as quick as it came just it gone. should that should be a netflix kind of documentary like <laughs> yeah you know, i can i the way you just described it it sounds like project x 
like mm-hmm. just like fucking having a hell of a time and then like of course something always has to you know unplug yeah. but yeah. um what do you what do you see uh, is the well let me ask you a question you're not gonna stop right like absolutely not man. i made a fucking mark on this space and I, I was about to, to say, like, if you're going to just go ahead and bow out like that, and I mean, you you did make a mark on the space and you continue. I mean, I see you on social media all the time. You have people, legions of people following you. Like every single time you put out like, yo, drop an NFT. Like <laughs> it seems like the entire Twitter uh, or I would say the NFT space comes out and like, yo, I'm dropping. You know why? Because I'm NFT native, right? Most people came from crypto and they had a background. I was not in like the public sphere at all when I started this, you know, I had a, maybe 800 followers on Twitter and, and yeah. you know, on Instagram. Like I wasn't active on social so much and I built like hundreds of thousands of followers across social just through the NFT space. Yeah. Cause people identified me with the guy alongside Mark Cuban that built that NFT, which helped build the foundation of the space. Yeah. And obviously not, it goes back to 17, et cetera, but at least, taking in like, whoa, let's make it fucking cool. So, you know, a lot of people respect that and appreciate that. And most 95% of people are like, thank you for educating me or bringing me in the space. And you have, you know, the 5% say like, fuck you, right? Whether whether it's right or wrong, there's a lot of hate in, in our industry and it's easy to hate when you're anonymous. And it's yeah. easy to, people want to, I like to see people win, you know, like, when you do something good, I'm like, yeah, fuck, that's fucking awesome, bro. Like, I don't care if it's less money or more money. Like, well, a lot of people in this space, they want to see you lose. And I don't know if it's a, ref- if they're, it's a reflection of their own issues or, you know, it's just, it's, it's very easy to, to tweet something yeah. and, and make someone feel like shit for your, to make you yourself feel better or, or you know. I, I, well, I, I, I usually, it. I go with the route that like the haters on here, the trolls, like, first of all, the, like, if you have 95% uh, of the people following you rooting for you, they really, they don't have time to go ahead and defend you because they have jobs, lives. <laughs> and then you have the 5% that don't, the ones <laughs> that hate you are usually the ones that they see you and they're like, oh man, that's what I was supposed to be doing. But now like, he's doing it and it's not fair. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take him down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on an avatar. I'm going to get myself a burner account. I'm going to say mean things to him. And I ho- hopefully I press a button or two and make him cry. And like, like it, yeah, I mean, exactly. and, and especially also with the two years of lockdown and restrictions. I mean, you know, that, that didn't help either. But no one, no one understands how far I had to come how broke I was for so many years to get to this position. They thought I walked right. into it with an Instagram account. Yeah. I had so many things I had to do. Like I built my company Playline for six years into the largest sports lottery in the world. And in one day when they eliminated sports in the pandemic, it was dead. In one day, like we were sports betting, no more sports today. I went back to zero again, fucking, you know, two and a half years ago, I was broke as fuck again. Right. And I had to reinvent myself. And I, you know, I just hustled. I think people should appreciate yeah. the grind versus the failure or, or whatever happened, the downfall, right? So yeah. I, I genuinely, like, I, the reason why people fuck with me is like, I can still relate to them because I never changed when I was rich or poor, rich or poor. I just, I'm just me, man. Yeah. Like, fuck with me or no, like, I don't give a fuck, but, but that's just me. So I say it as it is. And I, I don't think people on, Twitter necessarily appreciate that because they, I should be some asshole. I should be some motherfucker that was posting all this shit. Right. But I'm not. So, yeah. and, I, and again, I'm not going to change for you because you're a fucking hater. Right. Yeah. So I just kind of brush it off, man. Like that's life. Like I can't control what people say. I can't control what people do. I know that I, I I'm comfortable in the skin that I am in as you, like you're very outspoken, man. Like that's why I fuck with you on Twitter. Like you will say it as it is. And I respect that. Cause not a lot of people are doing that anymore. Not, especially yeah. in the younger generation. Like we're from the, probably the same generation. Yeah. The younger, the younger guys, like it's like, they're going to say what, what people want to hear. Yeah. And you say it as it is, man. I respect that about you. I, I, I don't give a fuck about the likes and retweets. So I'm going to say whatever it is. And, uh, uh, and if you're going to hate me, okay. And I think 
over time you're gonna learn you're gonna be you're gonna turn from being a hater to a fan because like the shit that i say it, it, it's real it's it's real. the shit that i grew up on like you know if you're gonna ask questions well let's you're allowed to ask questions and i'm just not down with this new environment of being pc about shit Listen, yeah. people hit me with shit all over the, uh, you know, all the time on on what, on social media to go ahead and answer a fucking question. Answer it. I don't give a fuck. It yeah. is what it is. But I'm not going to hold back and be PC just because I want to be a part of a click or something. Yeah. There ain't no clicks here. You know, there ain't no clicks. man. Real quickly, somebody can go ahead and turn on you. I try to try to keep the circle a little bit small and just make sure that yeah. you know, I got yeah. people that are not a yes people. I, I need people that are telling me, yo, bro, like, that's no. what I, it's like yeah. what I tell my staff, bro. I'm like, give it to me straight. You're the only people that are going to give it to me straight. I don't, I can't fuck with yes people in my life. Sure. But I, but you don't level up. You can't level up. There's, it's impossible. Cause then you think you're the shit. And when you're not, you're, you're shitty. You, you ain't doing nothing, bro. Yeah, man. Um, and, you know, going back to your questions, like, am I, am I going to, am I still in the space? Like, man, the contribution I made, I, I am just letting that end in vain, Right. For me, yeah. there's 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 one to two million people in this little NFT community we have on Twitter yeah. that just sit there all day and do their thing, right? Yeah. The rest of the world is where I want to educate. I want to yeah. bring in the rest of the world in this space, right? Because I know how to do it. Yeah. I know how to go from zero and create millions of NFT people. Now I feel like I have the obligation to educate the rest of the world and show them why NFTs will change just this world and not crypto because I don't know yeah. like you you're, like I, your tweets are. Now, like I, I learned about crypto just from your tweets. Like you talk about all this shit I've never heard of in my life. But like, you know, I don't follow a lot of people, so I'm forced to read all your shit every day. <laughs> no, but like, I, yo, I, don't I, follow me, man. You might might follow yeah. me off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yo, the shit that I'm doing is just, uh, yo, I'm all in. That's you know, on both sides now, you know, because I was kind of like, I was kind of like an asshole when it came to NFTs because when the crypto punks came out, I was like, you pay. You're paying 1.3 million for this shit. Like I was like, what is this? Like, and then when you sat back and uh, and had a chance to sit back and talk with the NFT community, and you know just feel them out, I was like, I understand. Like yeah. th you have this moment of like, I understand what these, why somebody is paying one three uh, 1.3 million dollars in eat to acquire crypto punk. I was like, you know what? I love this community because it felt it, it almost the NFT community feels like um, what cryptocurrency was back when I first came in. It it was it's this it's this vibe I can't describe it, but it's like an altogether I don't want to say kumbaya kind of thing, but it's like yeah. whether I like you or not, we're in this together kind of thing. Yeah. Like you go to like New York City. I was born in New York City, and like going to an art gallery, it's like going into an art gal a gallery and looking at paint or paintings and like you, nobody's fighting. Everybody's looking at it and everybody has a different opinion on it. And then everybody leaves. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's He's like, you don't go there to fight. They, Michael, <laughs> no, ain't no Michael Jackson video beat it, you know, popping <laughs> off in an art gallery. No, where people bro. are just walking around with a, with a <laughs> shank or something, bro. So it's like, but uh, I was well, actually I at NFT NYC and like everybody was mad chill. Everybody yeah, I met, no, it's a great it was, you know what? I said, I wouldn't even touch anybody. I was hugging, you yeah, know, they had the COVID airdrop and shit. I was still hugging. <laughs> uh, it's actually a beautiful community. The good and the bad, it, it's real community though. Like, yeah. it's, it's, crypto, I don't feel that. I don't feel it because it's too mainstream, right? NFTs yeah. are still, still niche. Yeah. I was going to ask you this, which was leading into, what do you think the biggest problem you see is? What do you think the biggest problem we have, or how, how do I put this? What do you think is the biggest problem with the NFT and the Web3 uh, community? I'll tell you right now, it is, it's, I think it's very black and white from my perspective, education. And the, the difficulty to understand and read and do, like, there's not really a place where you go, it's like, oh, what's an NFT? Oh, go yeah. here, right? If you want to go into the internet, you go through Google, right? Yeah. There's not really a destination. It's like, that's where you start your NFT journey. You have to, you know, it's, the average stat is an NFT enthusiast has to have 12 tabs open on their computer to yeah. do their daily research on NFTs. And that's very fragmented and, and not scalable. So 
you need to know, you know, all the YouTube channels, there's, you know, how many Twitter accounts of influencers yeah. are there in NFT. You need to follow them. You need to be in the alpha groups. You need to be on discord. The average Joe will never understand that or have the time for that. Right. So I think we need to streamline that process and make it as easy as getting into crypto. Cause I find crypto, it's just bam, bam, and you're in. Yeah. NFT is like, 12 steps, bam, 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 bam. And, and you, you can't grow anything when it's that complex. So, that's true. you know, I want to find a way to make that easier for, for people. That's not sure. right now. Um, give me your worst, give me your best projects and your worst projects in the current, uh, I'll say NFT web three space. All right. So I'm biased because you know, I fuck with the apes. <laughs> I, I bought. Yo, you, if you would have said otherwise, we, I'm, I'm done with this interview, man. <laughs> uh, yes, I guess I, I, yes. I hold, I hold an eight. I hold, yeah, I got a couple, but I'll tell you one thing that's pretty dope. I just sold one of my crypto punks and Bill, Bill Murray bought it. So that's I, thought, I felt like that was pretty cool. You know, I, I, I saw that. that in our gallery. I saw that. I saw that. I saw when you sold it and he picked it up. You were like, yo, this is dope. Bill Murray just picked up my. My punk, like that, that was dope. So I, you know, I, I, I'm a gold ape, you know, I, at the time I bought, I think it's still the most expensive set ever purchased. I bought it for 800 ETH, which was the gold ape and the M1 and M2. And I got a lot of hate for that too, as well. Cause why is he so successful? <laughs> why is he buying gold apes? Yeah, let's <laughs> drink, let's drink to every single time you mention <laughs> hate. Let's, yeah, listen, I drink water and uh, <laughs> Me too, it was bro. a seltzer. Like, I got tap water, man. That's, um, is that tap water? It's tap water. Okay, Canadian tap water, guys. Um, yeah, I see you. You're always in the gym, man. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm sedentary. I sit here all fucking day. It's bad. Bro, you um, got to. Come God, on. I know. To. But I'm training. I'm training for something. Like, I'm really now, I'm training for uh, uh, the Sparta event, and uh, I'm training for Ironman. Uh, what? I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but I'm just, you know what? I want to try things. So what does that entail? Like what, what's, what's a just Sparta? Like, so like for, that's just, that's just like crazy. So like I'll stick, stick to Ironman. Like that's like biking, you know, swimming, running. Like I'm doing all this, all these things, literally all these things, the amount of, I can't even. And running explain. a massive company at the same time. I don't know how you have time. Well, I have really good people. Like, surround yourself with good people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because, like, you surround yourself with people that are, you know, lesser, I guess, lesser than you, and you go nowhere. Or yes. adequate, and you could say, oh, I'm good. Like, that defeats the whole purpose. Like, I want to surround myself with people that are better than me because I yeah. love learning. Like, I don't I, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Yeah. I say this no, all the time. I'm probably, I'm like, not. I'm the smartest person in the room. Like, yeah. but I... I'm ready to ask those questions to, I, I guess it's like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was really good offensively. He wasn't that good defense. I don't want to say he wasn't good defensively. He just focused on offense. And then he became this complete player, right? So like my mindset is like Kobe's or Michael's, right? When you read their shit, it's like, I want to do, be able to do everything. And that's like my mindset. I really want to do everything. Be able to answer any question that's, you know, thrown at me. Am I there yet? Almost not there fully. I'm learning. And that's why I have people like you come on. You guys say something clicks. I write it down and I'm researching. Bro, to get to that level, you have to have that COVID mentality. Like, I've always had that. I'm very intense. You know, I'm also ADHD and fucking dyslexic and shit. So my brain goes all to map. But like when I see something, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Actually, going back to Mark Cuban, I was like, I don't know, 25 or four or whatever. It's just years and years ago. And I'm sitting in my mom's basement. Like, I have no fucking clue what I'm going to do in my life. And I'm watching Shark Tank. I'm like, I'm watching this guy talk. I'm like, number one, I want to be him. Or like, I want to be like him. I want to work with him. I was just so inspired yeah. by this fucking guy. I'm like, this guy's the man. Sure enough, like 10, 15 years later, uh, you know, Fucking You're working with Cuban. Company, like, that's man. fucking, that's fucking the weirdest crazy, fucking bro. thing, man. Like, we came boys, like, emailing back and forth. The guy's a fucking genius. Are you guys still, uh, are you guys still close? Yeah, or? Yeah, we're cool. Like, we don't talk like we used to because, you know, yeah. gotcha. what's going on. But when at the height of the NFT industry, man, like five emails a day sometimes, like, it was just because he saw what I was doing and he knew that, you know, I had those skills to really 
Like I was doing something special and he acknowledged yeah. that. Right. So he would, he would just come back with shit in, in these emails. Like I'd ask him a question and he would just, he, even with like his broken texts, he probably responds so quickly. It was just mind blowing how this guy's brain works. And that like getting an email from Mark Cuban and him directing you or, or telling you this is the way to go. You better fucking jump on that. Right. Cause it's very hard to get someone's attention at that level, let alone someone that fucking big. Right. Sure. So I just, everything he told me to do, I just did it. And I gave it 110%. And I gave it that COVID mentality and he kept feeding me more, feeding me more, feeding me more, you know? And now I'm in a position where I have the confidence that I can, I don't need anybody's help. Like let's go. I need the- people around me, but like I have the mindset, like, yeah, you can take over the world. Why can't you change the fucking world? Well, you know? put it out there and you, and you say, I will, like most likely it'll happen. Like for me, yeah. like words are everything. Like when you well, say I'm going to try or I have plan, well, if plan A doesn't work, I have B, C, and D. Like, no, there is no B. One plan, bro. You like, can't be half pregnant. You can't yeah, I mean, what, be half pregnant. What the fuck is that? Like, what, like seriously, how can you even win with that mindset? Like, I yeah. don't understand that. You can't have a backup plan. If you have a backup plan, you've already lost. Like you have to have, it's like Kobe wasn't just trying to lose in the finals. <laughs> that wasn't his backup plan. It was like, I'm going to fucking win the championship and that's it. Yeah. Kobe and Mike went into, into the finals. Like, you know, uh, we're going to try here. Yeah, Let's yeah. try to win. Yeah. I've never yeah. went up like three, one. It was like jobs not finished. Yo, I love that quote. I love that. Like they asked him that and he was like, oh, bro. what do you mean? How am I happy? Jobs not finished. You know, what still affects me that he's, that he died. Yeah. It's so fucked up to think about a guy like that, that fucking fierce mindset like that. Um, he was like, a, he was a God. He, he was a, like, he was a legendary status while alive, you know? Yeah. It sucks because I only started liking him uh, towards the end of his career. And it's, and it, the same Are thing happened with Jordan. It was like, because I'm a Knicks fan yeah. and like, they used to dis- like, they destroy, they made, the Knicks look like a Pee Wee team, like <laughs> just like JV team getting destroyed. All, and I, but then you grew to appreciate the mindset. Yeah, like this, yeah. this is not like forget about talent. This is this is a mind. This is like this is insanity. Like the like they are so driven to like kill you. Like they're they're not there to like we're not friends. Yeah, not in a bad way, but like yeah. my focus is. I'm going to beat you. Like, that's it. And my whole team's coming with me. And we're going to yeah, do this. Right. And you ain't going to stop me. And that- yeah, you know what it's like, man? Some people look at that and they're like, I can't do that. that that's scary, that intensity. I'm like, God, it's like, like whoa. I'm, that inspires me. Like, he can do it. I can fucking do it. Exactly. Right? And that's the difference between an entrepreneur and a entrepreneur. As exactly, much, in my opinion at least. I, I just think uh, the word entrepreneur is, throw, uh, is thrown out there. Like everybody throws it onto their bios and stuff. Well, your bio, you've earned it. Yeah, but, you, <laughs> no, but you've man. never been an entrepreneur. You don't know what it takes. You don't know the sleepless nights. You don't know like staying up 72 hours. You have no clue what it takes. You think that little voice inside of you, you can do it. Exactly. I'll tell you when you become an entrepreneur, when you, when you failed, I think. I think yeah. when you failed and did it again and tried again, that's when you're an entrepreneur. There's no plan B or C. It's like yeah. you're still on the A. Now you're like, like, I don't even think you fail. You learn a lesson and you're like, okay, I'm going to switch this around. This is what I need to do in order for this to succeed. It's really one of those. mistakes on that. Correct. So I agree with you in the sense that think about every successful businessman ahead of us have always said, I have failed so many times. I need to fail. I learned so much yeah. from it, right? And now we talk about it. It's like, it's not a coincidence. You're correct. You know, some people get it lucky on their first shot. I didn't, you know? No, I, I didn't know either. I, I would say that this all happened like kind of like you, like my thing was all accidental. And like, How? When I, like, I, like I was into all this stuff, but then somebody was yapping away on Twitter about Bitcoin. So like my big ass mouth, has to, I don't, this was like, I mean, I was, I was already tweeting, but like, I didn't like, tweet that here? much it was 2016, 17, somebody was mouthing off. And I was like, yo, shut the fuck up. You have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Like I, and six hours I'm going at it on Twitter. I'm like, after six hours, he like, he, like he leaves 
this dude, le- and I'm like, hold on, what am I doing? I'm fighting on social media, but then holy shit, Did like the f- my following like exploded. I was like, I got DMs like, yo, I'm like, holy shit, this is this is pretty cool. Like, first of all, I don't even like, but I'm not even taking myself seriously because I'm like, I'm super, I, I consider myself super humble. So like, yeah. I'm like, whatever, cool, great. And then like, it just continues to grow. And then, so first it starts off, everybody's happy, you know, for you. But then, oh, yeah. so you get too then <laughs> yo, the hate, it just yeah. like, it, it's not slow either. It's, it, it's like an instant shot. You don't, you don't even see it coming. It's like, bam. Yo, there was many times I was like, I don't fucking need this shit. I'm out. Like, what the fuck am I doing? But then I was like, you know what? No, you, you having a win proves them wrong. You know, like, exactly. I'm I, I'm gonna work I'm gonna work harder. Yeah. I'm gonna make you cry harder, and then eventually you're gonna have to be my fan because you're gonna see how dedicated I am. That was the mindset I guess I developed. But I, then, really, I feel that in your tweets though. Like my tweets are a little more low key and just like I fuck with the NFT and I love the people. Yeah. You know? I like, but you're like, Shh, I'm gonna kill you in your tweet. I'm gonna fucking motherfucker just said Bitcoin wasn't gonna fu- fly. Well, fuck you, you cocksucker. You know what I mean? Like. Not in those words, but like you say it, you say it as it is. And I, I, I like I laugh in my head <laughs> at your tweets every day because it's like, told you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Listen, everybody wants to pull up receipts on me. Like I'll pull receipts on you yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, all right. So the biggest, you said biggest project in NFT is in the NFT space yeah. is. It's the board apes. So there's no question. Board apes. Nobody's touching them. They're just like weighing above everybody. What what what's what's the worst project that you've come across ever? Like that one thing that you can say, yo, that was the that was horrific. Or well, it might have been the bottom for NFTs or the top, excuse me, not the bottom. The well, bottom. you can put them together. Man, there's been a lot of bottoms. There, uh, there's been a lot of fucking bottoms. Do you have one? I. I don't fucking know. I think there's I yeah, the I hard think there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. Project. If I say one that I have on my mind right now, I'm going to get assassinated. I, I was thinking that if I say one I has on my mind right now, I was thinking the same thing. There's one motherfucker out there that we both know. For some reason, it's had out for me. Like, day one. Just hey, hey, hey. You just bash the out of tea. And he's a big influence. Just bash the out of tea. I was like, I'm going to say his fucking project. But then... Uh, this is gonna be on the internet forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what? I, you know, I, out, you of, out of respect for the community, because I'm a community guy and I love communities, and it's not their fault. I'm just gonna shut the fuck up. But you know what? No, 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 no. I won't shut the fuck up on this one. The year of the woman. I'm gonna tell you why. Here I am, because like 95% of my family is women. So here I am. I do wanna. It was funny. I was watching something on TikTok today. Some woman, I don't know what her name is, but she did a video about uh, like women in NFTs press, like one of these, uh, you know, outings. And she was saying, yeah, this is, uh, she was describing an event where women are talking at an NFT uh, gathering. And it was just, well, we're women and we're in the NFT space. And the woman's like, same character, playing a different character. She's like, well, what else? And she's like, no, we're just women. And then I thought it was hilarious. You got to watch it. I'll send it to you. But women of NFTs, uh, women, uh, year of the women, of, or something like that. World of women? It wasn't world of women. It was what? It was something wow. year of the women. I, I went. Was it the part, biggest women project? N- no, I'll show it to you. It was like, okay. but it was hyped up. It was hyped. And my. The world of women dropped and everyone was doing. Yeah. So. Version. It, Correct. And like, I'm like, yo, listen, I'm a big advocate for women in the space, but that's only because I think women are more, I know this people are, you know, probably Andrew Tate will hate me for this, but I feel, (laughs) I really do feel that women are more mature than guys because you don't, they're not, they're not sausage fighting out there. Like they're, they're like, Hey, how do we take this to the next level? This is how I could, they're educating. Right. And they want to be a part of the space. And I love that. So I'd rather listen in, in uh, I'd rather listen in to, you know, a woman speak about the topic than some dude that just wants to go ahead and feed the ego. Right. Yeah. So uh, here it comes. The project comes out. Uh, the co uh, the co-owner of G media texts me at three, four o'clock in the morning, but he's two hours behind. He's in Calgary and shit. And like, 
I see Hollywood, the, Canadian. Yeah, oh. I'm, I'm surrounded by fucking Canadians. <laughs> and he tells me like, yo, he just bought three. And I was like, yo, I want to support. Don't flash it. <laughs> I, I said, fuck it, I'm buying eight. First of all, I wanted to up him. And then I was like, you know what? Let me support it. And I contacted her. She was like, thank you so much. Da, 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 da. Disappeared. Disappeared. Huh. Yo, everybody who knows me and knows that I went and got and eight, they're like, you're an idiot. I'm like, no, I was trying to support. They're like, you're an idiot. Disappeared. So now I, I will tag that project as like, I, the shit, art is good, but like, she says, like, it's personal for you, you know? It's, per it's a fucking fuck you. Oh, they I have another. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she fucked me. And she probably <laughs> fucked the community. But you know what? There's another project that I can't say the name because, like, honestly, JF, I will get destroyed. Um, now you have to say it. I can't. I, I you're un, you're unapologetic, man. Yeah, I know I am, but you're like, shit, but but the community shit, suffers. The community suffers. I don't want oh, them to that's suffer. Shit. That's the only yeah. reason why I'm holding back. What do you? All right, let's change up. What do you think about TikTok? Like, where's your head out there? I think TikTok is fucking underrated. I think if you master TikTok, you know, if you get away from all the, the China's looking at your data and all this shit. If you master TikTok, I think you can build a phenomenal platform on there. I do TikToks and stuff, but like I don't do like the like the, I know what's popping on on TikTok. It's like the funny goofy shit and like, you know, do a dance and, you know, I don't know, the renegade, but like find I don't think I think you need to really with with NFTs and I guess with crypto, you really have to consistently do it every day or you have to start off with something else and then lead into it and i'm talking about your content has to be really uh it has to go to the right and then it eases into these two topics or two industries uh in order for it to grow I, that that's what i feel um but i think it's a great platform i think tiktok is i'd rather use tiktok than instagram uh, See, that's what I'm really asking. I'm hearing that a lot. So we have that in the on TikTok. I think it's got like 400,000 followers verified and yeah. all that. That's and we dope. never pushed it. Like we, we never, we just built. Like we were just building and then kind of was just there on the sidelines. But everyone's like, yo, Instagram dying. Go to TikTok. Instagram's dying. Go to TikTok. And, I'm, and I built at NFT on Instagram. And yeah. I have on TikTok. I'm like, maybe we should be investing more time. Nah, you should. TikTok. I, I would say like TikTok and like, look, Instagram for me is like a bunch of people just, you know, posting a picture and, you know, filtering themselves. And, and then when you meet them, they don't even look like the, per like you're looking around an event and like, well, the person's in your face, but you don't recognize them because they've, I mean, they've chopped themselves up really good, man. I think, I think it's very, it's, it's a little too, it's a little too fake for me. I like, I actually was never on Twitter until I got shut down. So when Atom T got shut down, my personal ad JF got shut down and 40 other accounts, but that's the whole other story. Shout out to Twitter, man, with all the bots attacking us with their advertisements. You see that? I hate that shit. Hate shout that out shit. to Elon. Elon's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, seriously, shout out to Elon. Yeah. I was loving that transaction. But Yo. anyways, Twitter's real, man. Twitter, you can just say what like you say what's you say it. You say it. You he's about like, to buy Twitter for half price. That's what he's about uh, to buy. He's a genius. He for sure pulled out intentionally. Jeez. It's actually it was it actually affected me because when I was trying to figure out with my lawyers the Twitter situation, we, we had you know, we are at Meta now we have to go you know, we got shut down on Twitter yeah you know arbitrarily and my lawyer is like well now it's a conflict of interest because Elon is trying to buy it so I actually had to bring in a new law firm to <laughs> like Elon fuck my 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 legal situation thanks there. Elon yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring back NFT Elon come on man I, I want to. Being that, uh, well, I'm I'm Jewish. Like I, I'm I'm half and half, but I'm fully you know I take on I'm Jewish, right? Yeah. I like being the, I like being the underdog anyway, so it doesn't yeah, look. Yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the two's are in Hebrew, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have some Hebrew ones, but you remember in uh, in fucking uh, Goodfellas, only the good half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, what's up? Tell me. So, how do you feel about this whole? Uh, Yuga Labs, Board Apes versus Rider, uh, Rider Rips, and uh, I guess Paulia along with that. I, wh how do you feel? I would say Rider Rips more so because he's been really outspoken about uh, about you know Yuga Labs trolling the entire space and being racist. And to me, like I, I don't, I don't. I saw the video. I watched the YouTube thing. 
because I had to, not because yeah. I wanted to. Uh, it's convincing. It's convincing. Yeah, you can see uh, things, but like, but my only thing is, maybe I would take it a little bit more seriously. Maybe, and this is what I, I, I invite a writer on, like I can't get through to him. So guys, like, I'm more than happy to have a debate with anybody. I can care less who it is. But at the end of the day, like, it, you know, he said some nasty shit back in his day. Yeah. And it's all about like, I'm an activist, I'm an activist. And then you come out with the same board apes. So, but that's, like, you know, yeah, mirror So like, what, what, like, I would take it again. My whole thing is I'll take it seriously, but it has to come from a person like Who's serious? people that are serious about this topic. To me, I can't take it seriously. I personally am not offended. And it's not due to the fact that there's money because everybody says, oh, because you have, no, no, it has nothing to do with that. It's just, I don't, I really don't like, you can make, or you could turn anything into a racist yeah, yeah. subject. Yeah. If you really, you could turn goblins, goblin town into a racist subject. Absolutely. I hate goblins. I think the way they look, they're racist. I, I you, <laughs> and you can make a YouTube video about it for, uh, for a one, uh, one hour special, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So what are your so, thoughts? I mean, I didn't mean to take away the mic, but like, no, 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 I, I, I like the passion. So, you know, I'm Jewish. My, you know, my family died in the Holocaust. My mom was born in Israel. So I get it. There's a lot of, like a lot of coincidences there. And I'm someone who is a little bit more naive, may believe it. I really can't see any of that happening. Like, yeah, some things are like, okay, that's kind of strange, yeah. but you know, guy was Siri, you know, I know that's what I'm know, saying. In Israel, he's heavily invested in them. You know, I, I don't, I can't see him being part of that company given that information. And I think, I, I think it's a, you know, a lot of people say the Holocaust is fake, right? And there's a lot of believers in that. Yeah. And you can put, you know, I'm sure they can tie some stories together to make it make sense. You yeah. know, but I, I don't know. I just can't, man. And I'm not because I'm a holder and I've been investing in it for a long time. I just, the same age and, and, and too many people are in, like too many celebrities, too many Jewish people, too many billionaires or everyone was backed in some capacity. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a hard no there. I'm going to yeah. give a hard no there. I mean, because like, uh, look, if it was real, if it was real, if it was real, I would have like, if they came out and said like, yeah, we did it. And no apology. Like we did it. We trolled you. We four chan your asses. Imagine. <laughs> I w I would dump it. I mean, people I'd might look at millions me. if that happened. I'd like literally, shocked. like see, I, I, I'm sorry, but like it's all out of principle. Like I, I had family, a lot of family who got killed in the Holocaust. Yeah. So to me, it would be like, yo, I would be like, in a sense, disres being disrespectful, and also like, I don't stand for that kind of shit. Like, so now nah, I dump it. There's no amount of money. Like you can, I'm, I'd go into something. I go into something else. It would be sad though, because like I got into board apes because I feel like you know, they throw these events guy has done a phenomenal job and everybody else there, you know, the, you know, particularly one thing that I always mention, JF is like, if, if I had an opportunity to meet Mark Cuban, we, we spoke about Mark Cuban. If I have an opportunity to meet Mark Cuban because a board ape event is allowing me to do so, and only people that have a board ape can go ahead and meet Mark Cuban at a certain event, why not? Like I run a business, like I run a business. If I can meet Cuban and he can tell me within 30 minutes how to make my business better. Uh -huh, you just mentioned it earlier in this interview, right? Fuck. I'm listening. I I'm not, closed-minded i'm open-minded like so that that to me like for me the board ape itself people are like well, how would could you pay so much money for it but yeah but what's my roi on that what, what's yeah. the roi on like how much would it cost you to meet a mark cuban or a kevin o'leary or whoever you know how much time would you have to spend connecting with uh, people to help go ahead and finally bring you two together right that's a lot of money i also look at it as part of my brand you know people look at my ape and they associate it to me yeah, one the same now. And you know, when I originally invested in it, I, my thought was like, eventually in the metaverse, you're gonna be your PFP, you're gonna be your NFT, yeah. right? And if I walk in there with my gold ape, everyone's gonna know like JFC, right? That's my identity and building my my digital footprint now. Because yeah. you know, my in my mind, five years from now, like 
you're going to spend a lot more time in the metaverse as your as as your NFT. I think I believe right. Yeah. And for for me, it's like that's how. I own the IP rights to it as well. Like I own the IP rights to my brand now and yeah. my digital identity. And I think that I think it, you know, it, it allows people, you know, it's good and bad. I think it allows people to be someone they want to be, you know, because people, I believe the first level of this is Instagram filters, change who you are, post what you, you know, what people want to see, right. And, and be this person that you, you, you the best version of yourself. With an IMT, you can get that clout and that that confidence, even if you sit in your mom's basement 24 hours a day, in that world, yeah. eventually the metaverse, like you can be your best self. And me, I do it for the branding and you know, having, you know, it's my again digital footprint. Yeah. Some people use it because they don't love their life, they're not happy with who they are. Yeah. And this item that's an expensive item allows you to get the notoriety and the love that you may have never gotten in the real world. So there's, it's a catch 22 in some, in some senses, like think about it. You buy a board eight, people start following you. People start messaging you. Board eight start following you. Like the main account, everybody starts, yo, follow. Like, it's just, I remember buying my first board eight people like out of nowhere started like, just following me. I was like, holy shit, man. Like, really? This is it. I think it's the new blue check Mark. Like, like, it's more powerful. It's more exclusive. There's yeah. there's ten thousand of these in the world, right? Yeah. There's, but could that end in two years? Like, does Board Apes go to shit in two years? Because I mean, they raised five hundred million, a five billion dollar valuation. They're up to something. I I don't know. I can't see them. Uh, I can't see them disappearing just because they've hit everything on the roadmap. Ape yeah. token, like they they've done. Listen, yeah, 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 you're you're happy about. I, listen, I'm telling you, I think eight <laughs> token. I can't talk about eight man. You no. know what I mean. <laughs> listen, it's long term, and I think that's the problem in crypto that we have, and even with NFTs, a, a bit. We have this instant gratification kind of thing. So like, people want to see it right away, but that's not how markets work. It's not right away, and like, people just need to be patient with it. I believe, you know, they have built this ecosystem to where like everything is going to work and ape token is just that chip to make everything within their own ecosystem. Look at this bear market we've had. Yeah. The floor on the apes were going up during that time. Yeah. That was the only floor that was really taking keeping sure. steady. Yeah. That says something about the community and also how much money people invest in it. Like they can't sell out. Like their people are, their livelihoods are in this ape. Like they sure. don't, can't buy a house because they are invested in this ape. Right? What There's, do you think about uh, Moonbirds? Since we're talking about apes, what do you, like, I think it's a shit, shit of a project. I am not, that's, that's, you know, I, I, so I know who Kevin Rose is from back in the day and just being a big VC and investing in a lot of cool shit. I don't love the project, if I'm honest. Like, I was going to buy it a few times, but I wasn't just going to buy it to buy it. And I don't, I don't believe, like, you have to be an ape or a moonbird. Yeah. It just doesn't appeal to me. And it's not, it's not my crowd. And it's just, I don't like the art. Like, I'm not, I'm not into the art. And yeah. the whole thing that they did recently with making the IP a- public, yeah. I get it. And it's cool, but you do that at day one. You know, yeah, so that's what I thought that was fucked up because you didn't give the people an ability to say, okay, you can vote on it or something. Yeah, like that. it's fucked up. It's fucked that's up what, because some people invested all the money they have into a, a Moonbird at 30 ETH or whatever it was. There were people so, flipping their punks and everything to get yeah. in. And, and the floor dropped, like it, it was at 16 ETH after that announcement. But you have to trust a you know, guy like Kevin Rose knows what he's doing, and, and maybe he's way ahead of us, and that's why. You know, he's, you know, we're, we're just like, well, that's a dumb move, but maybe he knows something we don't. I don't know. Listen, I, the, maybe he's smarter than me. And I, and I always say maybe there are people that are smarter than me and I'm sure he knows what he's doing. But to me, it was more like I was listening to him on the spaces and I was just like, no, why are you coming out saying that you're going to beat the board apes? I, I get it. That's a good mentality yeah, to have, yeah, you, but, but that's something like, keep it inside. Like, you know, come, come out with a roadmap, like do like, I, I don't know. It's just like the art was like 
that's the thing. I didn't love the art. Like I didn't, I see Bored Apes, like those are fucking dope. Crypto Punk's like, those are pretty dope, right? Doodles, I love doodles. I'm a doodles doodle. are cool. Doodles yeah, are doodles cool. are cool. You know, I, I just don't, I, I think maybe they're following into, the buy into Kevin Rose when they're investing it. Like I think if Mark Cuban dropped something, like Gary V dropped V coins, right? Those guys have so much, they've won so many times, people are just going to buy it because it's them, right? So, Moonbirds, it's, it's for me, it's more niche. Like, my mom knows the board ape is. My mom, she's 66, and when awesome. all the hype was going on, she's like, Can you have me a board ape? I'm like, Mom, it's like 450K right now. <laughs> you know, what are you going to put it in your, in your Facebook profile with yeah. three friends? <laughs> like, don't waste it. But I don't, I don't know anybody outside of the core NFT community that would that know Moonbirds. Yeah. A lot of people know board apes. Like, it, it is definitely. It's definitely mainstream, and that gives me confidence. Like I told you, I, th- I told you, I took all my Bitcoin and put it into ApeCoin. You know, maybe the timing was bad, but and I love Bitcoin. Don't get me wrong. Oh my God, what you just said, you're going to get attacked by every maxi. Okay, but hear me out for a second. I I'm okay with happy, it. I'm just I'm just saying. I, I've I've invested a lot of money into the ape community and the punk community, right? I know that space so fucking well. Like I know NFT so well, I can, like I have my finger on the pulse there, right? Cause I'm, you know, I'm on that inside. I help grow that industry. So for me, I'm investing in something I know. I spent two and a half million dollars on the board eight set, right? Yeah. So I'm, in, I'm, I'm like supporting my investment. I've always loved Bitcoin and I always love, will love Bitcoin. I'll always get back into it. But I don't know. And I, again, I'm NFT native, right? Correct. I didn't, I wasn't a crypto guy. So for me, it's just, I don't know what's going to happen on the Bitcoin. I don't research Bitcoin every day. Like I'm so into NFTs only that it made sense to invest in the, the biggest in that space. And what I've made my biggest investment in this space. When people call NFTs garbage, what do you say? Uh, you're just living in the past, man. Like I, I, I believe like when my kids get older, on their walls, they're not going to have a painting. We'll have an indent with like a screen inside the wall with their NFTs on there. It's just getting started. And beyond the art aspect of it, you know, you understand the utility of, of NFTs, how it's going to evolve the world. You think Meta, Facebook, Instagram changed their name to Meta to go to kind of own that metaverse? Like, what do you need to get in the metaverse? You have to have an NFT. You can't get in without an NFT, right? It's yeah. game changing. It's funny that like I get attacked because uh, I got attacked this weekend uh, because I because I own an NFT. I am a scammer because I'm a part. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm a part of the you know because I have a board ape. I am a scammer, and I was like, wow, uh, this is enlightening. uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, So what Jay Z says. What Jay Z say? What what does he say? His uncle. He was telling his uncle, he's going to go this, you know, he goes, his uncle's like, you can't do that. You can't do that. I remember that. He's, he's like, no, you can't do that. Yeah. And some people just can't see it. And it's not to break them down. It's just like, that's impossible. That's impossible for you. Right. And that's how, like, I look at the world, like I can change the world. Maybe you can't cause you think I'm crazy, but like, I believe I can't. Yeah. And looking into technology, like NFTs, like for me, that's just the future. Like crypto. I was NFT. sitting when I was at when I was speaking at NFT NYC. Like after I was done, I had I don't want to name the companies because they asked me not to, but like major companies were rushing to go ahead and like give me like the numbers, talk to me, you know, ask me like how do we get into the NFT space? I had so many calls. How do we get into the NFT space? Like major comp billions of dollars. Every like, this is, to be in it. Yeah, but they're not stupid. Now they're, they're sending people that are, you know, I would say our age or maybe younger, Gen Z-ish, to go ahead and figure out how do they get into the space. And that's big. So to say that, you know what, to say that NFTs are a crock of shit, I think you're just not open-minded yeah. and that you're going to get left behind. Like, again, I never tell anybody to get into anything, whether it's crypto or NFTs. Yeah. You should make your own decision. Like, you should outline everything for yourself on a piece of paper with a pen, old school, and like write it down. Yeah, I'm listen. I'm old school, man. I got a pen always handy, yeah, man. Yeah, always. Yeah. And like, just write it down, and whatever fits fits, man. Like, look for me, Bitcoin doesn't fuck with anything else. It's it's sound money. It's 
It's something it that the people created and no. I hope that it'll fix the monetary system. But with NFTs, I think there is a purpose for NFTs and they, it's going to be a game changer, not just art wise, but like besides art, because it gave so many people an opportunity, the same ones that would sit outside and paint and, and draw shit up that Absolutely. only got $5 for it. And now they're, they're millionaires. Have a career. Around, yeah. you know? Good for them. Look, good for the Beebles. Like, I don't hate on anybody. God bless. Go get it. You deserve it. As long as you got talent and you're doing it uh, you know, on a legit shit, like, I I'm with it. But Bro, I was I'm just not open-minded, man. Some don't get the tech. It's not just art. It's it's like, titling. It's like real estate. Like, there's going to be so much that you'll be able to do with NFTs that, honestly, it just raises the game to the next level. How many people said the internet was bullshit? Exactly. Right. Emails like, were bullshit, right? Emails were bullshit. You can't live. Eventually, you won't be able to live in this world without a digital footprint. And, and this right. is just taking your digital. Your digital footprint was analog before. It was like email and, and you know, you know, whatever it was. This is the next evolution of, of people's identity. And you can take it seriously now, but eventually, or not, but in five years, you will have to. Because just like the internet, every motherfucker uses the internet now. What's the next hit? in the NFT space? Will it be one of ones or will it be the 10,000 PFPs? I think that the 10,000 PFP play is done in the carnation is today. I think a lot of brands will, do, will use that format to access more people, maybe with free mints, just to kind of get more data from them and keep them feeling more of a community base to their brand. Um, I think I'm a big fan of one-on-one -on -one art and artists. I, I like to support them. I believe they're the backbone of NFTs uh, as we know it now, uh, but it's going to, it's the saturation's there. Like it's going to be harder and harder for them to break in. Just like when PFPs went crazy, like it was so difficult to, to get a board ape. Everyone wants to be the next people, right? Yeah. But in any world, it's going to, the more saturated it gets, the harder it's going to be. So yeah. I think the one-on-one, the -on -one, like I like investing it just because I like to support the community. And I think that, NFTs have an ability to create like an equality amongst the world yeah. where, you know, as long as you have internet and access to a, um, you know, a phone, whatever, like you can make an NFT, you can start a career in NFT. So I believe in that format of it. I think the one-on-ones will, 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 will maintain as they are. And a lot of people will fizzle out because they're not making a single sale. And the yeah. people that survive, you know, there'll be a lot more beeples around. Cause as I said, when you have an NFT on your wall, when when you're building your house and you have a screen there instead of an actual physical art, those one on ones will, will maintain a lot of value. For for me, I I hope that the one on ones get the support from guys like you who are big, like you're big in the NFT community. I hope the one on ones get the opportunity to be put on a platform to be seen. Now, if people want to get into it or not, it's a different story. But I, I really want to see them get the chance and opportunity to show off their creativity. Creativity, their art. But, creativity there is like mind blowing. But like they, I just feel bad for them because either, you know, they get the platform. And if they don't, then they have to work for somebody who then, you know, gives them only five to 10%. And, you know, and they have to work for a project that's like milking in, you know, 90% into their own pockets. And I feel bad for them. And I think that really needs to change. And I think also what's wrong with it is that a lot of people are doing it just to make money. Like they're seeing an easy yeah. way to, to pick up a buck by selling a, a, some, some NFT, some art. And the, but the true artists will stay. It's just like you have so many scammers in crypto and NFT and they did their job, they scam and they're going to move on to the next thing, yeah. the, you know. I think I think with with artists in anti space, they're just whoever can make it through the bear markets and make it through and just keep building and keep creating great art. Creativity will thrive always. Yeah, I, I hope I hope it excels. And and actually, why I said I was going to buy so January first or second of this year, I said I'm going to buy uh, an NFT every single day yeah. from a smaller artist, from an up and coming artist, a one on one artist. And the reason why I did it, I said. I want to prove that NFTs have the, this is one of the reasons, have the ability to create equality in the world. So what I do when I buy those NFTs every day, I don't look at the profiles. I don't pass judgment. I don't yeah. tap into their, I don't look at their names. I'm just based on the art, you know? So everyone has an equal opportunity. 
when they post on my page, when I buy every day, it's like, you can be from any walks of life, but I'm basing on, on your art, not your sex, not your color, or your economic status. Because the minute you tap into someone's profile, you start yeah. joking. I, I, yeah, 100%. I, and I definitely appreciate you uh, being out there and I see it every day. You're buying NFTs and it's just like, that's dope. It's dope for somebody that's trying to get out there and show off their shit. And then I post it for them also, right? And, and I yeah. don't post anybody's shit, man. Like, yeah. I, I tweeted one of your tweets. Yeah. I, I can't tell you another, because like it was a fucking great spiel you had going, but I don't retweet anybody's. I don't like using my community. Like I turn down money every day. I've never showed a single project on my page because I want to give the purity to my, my community that, that I yeah. can bring. And that's when I retweeted it. Like for you, maybe not be a big deal, but for me, it really is. And I don't know. I just, I, I, I just see the pain of all these people and, and I talk to them on spaces and you know, like, man, this one girl, she, she was on a space with me and she's like, I live in Sudan and I don't know if you realize this, but you bought one of my pieces. She was, I was in a position where I had to leave. It's war stricken in my country. My kids couldn't like, didn't have sufficient food. I couldn't pay my rent. And she goes, you bought my NFT. It bought me a, a, a month of rent. And now I'm a full-time artist and I don't have to leave my country or my home. And I didn't know I was doing that, but when I heard that, I'm like, fuck, this can actually make an impact. That's, so that's why I just kept doing it. That's dope. All right. So last question. And I appreciate you coming on, JF. I, I really do. Like, um, and hopefully you'll come on. I don't on. do podcasts. I don't do much, but when you ask me, I fuck with you, bro. So I'm happy to be Appreciate here. that. In a year's time, a year from now, where do you see yourself in this space? Oh, I'm bigger than I was when I was live, man. I know, I, I know, I know the power I have in space, bro. And I would say at my peak, everyone knew Jeff. Like I was the business contact on on, on that NFT page, and I've been I've been quiet because I've been building. I've, I've been building, and like I said to you, bro, I onboarded millions. I think I can contribute to onboarding billions. That's my goal. How do I take, I want to evolve our industry. Yeah. I believe it needs to the voices like us to just excel it. But in one year, I'll have, I believe I'll have the biggest NFT platform and not, 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 you know, general platform in the space of onboarding and educating. That's where my head's at. Where do you think you're going to be in the air? <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> I don't fucking know. But I, I take it, yeah, honestly, I take it day by day, man. One day, they all, one day they all motherfucking me. The next day they all love me. Man. It's one of those fucking they love to hate you, bro. Hey, listen. Every young king gets their head cut off at least once, man. That's so. true. That's true, man. But like, you know. I'll tell uh, you come back. We need, uh, you know. More so than anything, we need to all, whether we like each other or not, we, the space is so young and we have people coming after it and calling it, you know, bullshit that we need to go ahead and, you know, work together. And that's us though, right? We are, there's very few of us in the space. How many influencers do you want to call them? In yeah. Not many, man. So it's our duty to shut them up and, and build. I take that. I take that. And I'm like, yo, uh, when somebody says influencer, it fucking drives me nuts. No, no, sometimes I have to, some people say I have to embrace it. I'm like, I don't want to embrace it. I just want to, if you're going to call me an influencer, then I want to be like guy. Right. Because if you look at guy who has done a phenomenal job with Luna lab, uh, I mean, uh, Yuga labs and, uh, and with the well, Luna, I can tell. Yeah, I was about to say Luna. I was like, oh, this guy. If I call you, if I call your project Luna, know that that means that it's awful. Uh, it's but no, but uh, Yuga Labs and Board Apes. I think he's done a phenomenal job, and you can call him. Th that's the type of influencer you want to be. You want to be somebody who is able to build something, and and influence people. From a difference, like not not where you're screaming buy or some shit, but like he's, yeah. you can say, hey, I can go ahead and build shit in Web three, and that to me is like that's dope as fuck. But that's on that one. note, like I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to be dominating within the next year. Bro, we you're making the you're making the comeback. You no, know, we got that fired us, man. It's all about your second your second coming. Like I, 
I kind of like that I got fucking cut from the knees because I'm just going to come back better because I have all that experience now. When yeah. I started on NFT, no one knew me, and I had no experience on NFT, yeah. and no one knew me in the space. Now most people know me in the space, yeah. and I'm coming with that information and that you know, understanding and learning from that. There's only one way out, baby. Like, I fucking, I'm excited to come back. I am, bro. It. But you'll you're know good, about it. <laughs> and you're going to come with me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm down. I'm down for anything that has the word education in it. I think some people want to vomit with the amount of times that I say it per day, but it's the truth. Like without education, like, you know, people on board themselves here, they're looking for it. Nobody pays attention to them. And then they wind up in, you know, these 10,000 PFP projects, which all they're about to do is here you go. Thanks for paying. We're out. And like, if we had more education out there, that wouldn't happen. So the space just moved too quick. Um, sure. now, now it's slow down, hit the wall, and like now it's about us putting the pieces together. Well, I appreciate you, uh, and I appreciate your journey, and I'll continue to obviously watch you and uh, support you, bro. Because like uh, again, you, you're a stand-up dude, man. You didn't have to come into that Twitter space that time where I was going ape shit on everything, and you came <laughs> in and you were like, "Yo, I'm here." Uh, yeah. yeah, and and that. Honestly, I, I've done that myself. It is what it is. Like, I, I, I didn't take an L, but I, I said I can do better. And you've done that. So it's sure. impressive. It's and I can't say that a lot about people in this space. You know, they just talk a good game and then they disappear. So, you know, I, because we're very similar. The heart's on the sleeve. What you sure. see is what you get, man. And, and I think we understand each other, bro. So, you know, respect to you and everything. Thank you for having me. This is fucking awesome. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm my best friends are Canadian. Like, oh. I think it's time for me to move to Canada, man. Let's go. Well, you got to get your vaccine first. Like, let's yeah. start there. <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, on that note, JF, check him out. Uh, at JFX on Twitter. And he'll probably... Shut down on Instagram. Formerly at JF. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And um, yeah, check him out. He's done a hell of a job and... Listen, if you got a dope uh, piece, he's always yelling out, drop the NFT like I that down there. Uh, JF, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Hoping that you come on next time and we can go ahead and chit a chat. Absolutely, brother. Have a great one, man.